Hi, my name is David Wetton, and welcome to the Now is the Time for Conscious Leadership podcast. The intent of this podcast is to encourage you as a leader to embrace conscious leadership by giving you access to some of the world's leaders in the field of conscious leadership, both in practice and in thought. My heartfelt wish is that you leave this podcast feeling inspired with ideas to take away and implement in your business or organization to make a real difference in our world. And my guest today is Vinnie Palmer, Managing Director for National Express Accessible Transport Division. The National Express is a multinational public transport company, one of the largest, one of the top 250 companies in the UK. And as I'm reading this out, Vinny, I'm realizing just how this, how this job title, realizing how you are this job title and so much more. Now I know that your accessible transport division delivers valuable services in the form of dial a ride and school bus transportation for children with special needs. And I know that in these times of coronavirus, you've collaborated with an initiative across the West Midlands in England in partnership with Transport for West Midlands by repurposing your ring and ride fleet to provide free shuttle transport to the National Health Service and social care staff to and from work. And I know that this is so you. So for Vinay, leadership, transformation and change are at the heart of who he is and form the core of his skill set, which has enabled him to deliver excellent results throughout his career. A career which has spanned over 25 years and has seen him working for and consulting with FTSE 250 companies here in the UK in financial services, telecoms, automotive, retail and travel industries, inspiring fresh thinking and leading transformation, primarily in customer experience. One thing for me which shines through for Vinay as a conscious leader is a passion for change and making a real difference for people. Indeed, Vinay strongly believes that relationships and team working are the key to success. However, if I may go a little deeper, Vinay, I know that you yourself have had to overcome setbacks, challenges and obstacles in your life, which no doubt have fueled your conscious leadership. Vinny has written his book, A Passage to India, an inspirational true story of dealing with change, challenge and adversity, which describes some of the most harrowing moments of his life, including the death of his mother on his wedding day. I've read this book and it moved me deeply. So Vinay, it's a pleasure to be able to hear more about your journey with conscious leadership. And I'm absolutely thrilled to welcome you on the show. Sure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. So take five by the day, Brupet Quarter, is indeed my cue, Vin- Vinay, that it's time for you to take five. <laughs> Your take on five conscious leadership questions. So the first one is, what does conscious leadership mean to you? To me, conscious leadership is about um, when your insides lead your outsides. I think, you know, in spirituality in personal development in in human development we often talk about the inner and the outer self uh, and i think you move into conscious leadership when you start to understand that the exterior is a shell it is a it is a presentation to the world um, that's not the real you and conscious leadership is when you step into yourself and present that self in the actions and the behaviors to the outside world that are congruent with the internal that's just a, a beautiful answer, you know, and, and um, I love this aspect of actually you, you know, the moving or actually, you know, expressing the inside. Yeah. Was there was a moment when you actually got <clears throat> a ha-ha about this? What were your journey as a conscious leader? When did you get this? What, what was the point where you kind of really felt this and got this for you? I think, um, I think there's, um, there's a number of threads um, in my life. So there's my, there's my faith that I'm a, I'm a Hindu by, by faith. Um, I'm a spiritual per- person naturally um, in that I believe in connection um, and a sense of universal belonging. And um, I think throughout my career, there have been, there have been elements where there have been bits that have been chipped away at to reveal more of this in a self. So it's not suddenly been an epiphany where I've gone, da da, suddenly got it. It's been a, it, it, it has been and it still is a, a work in progress. 
and um, I'll talk about them in, in, in our crushes later on. There have been various influences that have caused me to do that. Uh, but the journey has been one of some of the life experiences and the things that you spoke about in terms of um, challenges that have overcome in life that have forced me to um, look into look into myself and uh, that that's sort of self discovery uh, and also a genuine a genuine interest in people and change in human behaviour about how we do what we do. So a combination of those things um, have kind of manifested themselves, I guess, into the leadership style that I now have and how I go about what it is that I do. That's wonderful. And I think one last thing in, in my journey in this area, part of, part of my journey is reading by someone um, who actually said that when he got to work, he was, he was actually sick and tired of going to work, putting his jacket on the peg, being someone who he was supposed to be in that culture leaving his work, putting his jacket on, coming home and being someone else who was different with his family and his community and his friends. Yeah. So I'm guessing, it, would, would it be fair for you? You know, does is that also resonate with you that actually you want to be your authentic self wherever you are? Is is that? Yeah, I, I think, and I think I was fortunate enough to kind of discover that quite early on in my life. Um, uh, and I think there was just this moment of, well, you know, that, there isn't a, a version of you that turns up to work and a version of you that's home. They don't have to be separate. They can be one and the same and you can bring yourself to work. And I was lucky enough to be in an organization at the time. Um, I, you know, I worked for a company called egg.com that many people remember. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that culture is bringing more of self, more of who you are to work, bring yourself to work. Um, and I think that was the beginning of understanding that um, who you are is who you are. Um, they're, they're not separate. And I, and I guess later in life, the, from a faith perspective, I think the thing that really um, connected it for me was that in the Hindu faith uh, and in, in many faiths, obviously we talk about the soul and we talk about um, God and in, for many people, they live as two separate things. And actually they're the same, the, the, mm -hmm. the soul, the Atma and mm. in, in Sanskrit, the Atma and, and Brahmin, which is God are one and the same. The universe um, is God and God is, is you. And, and, and in the very, um, traditional greeting of namaste you are greeting the god within mm. um, and it's kind of joining those dots together and go well actually it, it exists within inside you and therefore it's not separate from who you are um, and so that became this whole kind of thing about it is, it is the whole what is what is appearing out there and what is in here is, is one and the same wonderful tr truly wonderful and you just reminded me of uh, a saying i think probably from one of the mystics you know probably in the christian language which is you know where, wherever you go there god is mm -hmm. it's a kind of reminder which actually and i haven't planned this which kind of segues nicely into, into our next question so having spoken about conscious leadership how do you express your conscious leadership through your work you know i think um with that i, I guess it's just it's just unconscious now um i think there it is it is more about um how I show up and and who I am in the in the workplace and how I um, stand true to my own values and who I who I am as a person and being prepared to be the voice in the room that challenges that asks the questions that others may think and not feel are the right place to answer but just um, using my using my skill set in terms of being able to listen and ask the right questions and be present in that way I think that's what it's more about. It's more about how I show up. And I think it's really about understanding that, you know, the, the leadership conscious or not is not about you. It's about them. It's, you know, it's, this is, it is a, it is, um, it's not about um, how the accolades that you get and the things that you do, but it's more about the impact and the ability to, to influence those, those people around you to do the things you want them to do. It was a, it was a, it was a book that I read called the art of possibility by Benjamin Zander, who was the, uh, the Boston Philharmonic Orchestra conductor and had that epiphany in his 40s or 50s, I think it was, where he suddenly realized that even though his photo was on the CD of all the music they produced, he was powerless because he got his power from the orchestra to orchestra yeah. that he conducted. And without them, mm -hmm. you know, he wouldn't be doing what it is. And I think I've always, again, it was a fortunate discovery early in my career that I've, I've carried that strand through that leadership is about those people around you and, and it's not it's not about you. And I, I think that is a, that is a trait for me that, I, that I've seen in, in what I would call, you know, aspiring or, or conscious leaders, a sense that they, they have an understanding that actually they're not only serving a larger purpose, 
they're actually, you know, and there is a term, as you know, you know, called the servant leadership, mm. which, is, which is one of the strands really of, of conscious leadership, where the leader recognizes that, that he or she is, is, is here as a, as a servant leader. And in that sense, they're looking to tease out the best of all those that actually are, are, are in, are in, the, in their team that are actually working for them. And, and it's probably moving from, and I don't have any, any comments on this, that, you know, I see in, in my experience that, that leadership is moving from, I'm going to call it the older model of the patriarchal hierarchical model to more of, and I love the term leaderful leadership, where mm-hmm. actually at times different people are leading at different times. So I don't know how that, that resonates with your yeah, I, I think expression it, I of leadership. Think it, I think it resonates perfectly. I think um, leadership is in a bad position or a bad title. Um, leadership is about behavior and who you are being at any one point in time. You know, we've seen in this crisis and before people that aren't leader by title or leader by position step up and do things. I mean, I don't know if you saw mm-hmm. the the story of, um, of the, the, the incredible 99 year old Tom, um, who started out with a an idea of raising a thousand pounds for the NHS and has ended up raising over twelve million pounds? That's leadership. That's incredible. Just by be, just by that behaviour, by stepping forward and um, stepping in front um, and showing up. That that's leadership in in one sense of the word. It's not necessarily about being at the front of the room behind a lectern, commanding your troops to do this, that, or wherever. Those those leadership styles are contextual for those particular moments in time, but that is not the be all and end all of leadership is whether it is a, a father, whether it is a, a, as a husband, whether it is a, a managing director, whether it is as a leader uh, or a, um, you know, a, um, uh, a leader in my, in, in my community or whatever those different things are, it is about very much about how you show up um, and, and giving people direction. Um, thank you, Vinay, for, for talking about Captain Tom. I, I have been reading about it, actually posting it today. I just think it's an incredible story and the sense that actually, you know, as you said, you know, he's reaching 100. He wanted to do something. He's, he's isolated at home and actually he was going to do 100 lengths of, of, of you know, back and forth across his garden because he's, you know, he's very disabled. But actually mm-hmm. just set that goal of actually if I can raise a thousand pounds for NHS because they've looked after me so deeply in the past, and suddenly, I think as we stand now, you know, he's raised over 12 million. Yeah, it's, incredible. it's stunning. But but just finally on this, I think, because I also, you know, I think, no, not. You said you worked for AIG, which is part of Prudential Banking, a Prudential Organization, mm-hmm. a large financial organization. I did two or three pieces of consultancy work in there. And I met someone you know well who I consider to be a conscious leader also. That's Martin Labrook. Mm-hmm. And one of the phrases he taught me was actually stand in the place of possibility. And let mm. the outcome be the outcome. And, and mm. I really see Captain Tom, he walked in the place of possibility and his outcome is beyond anything he could have achieved. And he's now the biggest ever, I think, fundraiser on, on, on the Just Giving platform, yeah. which is stunning. I, I think, uh, yeah, amazing. And, and thank you for reminding of the word possibility because, um, you know, connected to the previous questions about where did this conscious leadership came from, I think it was understanding the power of the word possibility and understand that leadership is about inviting people into possibility. That, that's, that's, that's really at the core um, of where I am. And I remember Martin and that phrase very vividly about standing in possibility um, and the outcome is the outcome. I think that's, that's absolutely right. And so I think uh, before we go on to the next question, I just feel actually for you and for those that are listening to the excitement of actually that if you capture that sense of possibility, who knows what you're going to do in this situation. You too can be a captain, Tom wherever you are whatever you're doing and i just think that that's what lead, conscious leadership is an element is about for me so, so vinay um who for you is an exemplar of embodied conscious leadership and why yeah it's a, it's a tough question and i don't think there is a single one person that i can point to i think that i i look out for moments of conscious leadership in everybody everybody that i see there are moments where you see the conscious leader, leader step forward, even for a split second. For many, it steps forward, they get scared, and then it steps back. And then they become who they, they go back into the, the armor and become the person they want to present as opposed to their true authentic self. And for others, it's beautiful when you see there's a moment that takes shape where suddenly that inner, that inner leader steps out and they, they really go into their flow and become who they really are. So I think there are, there are, lots, of, there are lots and lots of examples. I don't think there are, there's a single person. I mean, it, it's probably cliche, you know, people like, 
Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, um, you know, they are books that, that I've read about them, I've, I've looked at their work and, and they are present in my work as well as people like Stephen Covey, um, Benjamin Zander, um, uh, you know, um, there, are, there are far too many to mention and I, I couldn't pinpoint a single, a single example. Mm, thank you. And I know that we, we've spoken before about, about Gandhi. So, so I just want to ask you, actually, because I'm curious, if you had to pick one quality of Gandhi, what is it that actually resonates with you in, in respect to conscious leadership? I think it was the, I think the world, the world is the indomitable will, the, the real, uh, the, the, the doggedness and the guts to stick to, to hold their principles as true, despite what was in front of him. Um, in the most difficult moments, staying true to what he believed in, the core values that he had, and the crystallized vision of what he wanted to achieve. I think that that core quality of being able to stand in that in that possibility, despite what was going on, mm-hmm. I think that's probably the, the core of it. And because I'm a curious person, <laughs> do you have one example for you where where you've you've expressed that indomitable will in in your work? Um, hmm. I think there were there were lots of little examples. I mean, I guess in my personal life, there's probably a, a, a bigger example than anything else ever. You know, the standing in the possibility of being a parent when the, the all the biology was saying that we could that could never be achieved. And mm-hmm. you know, um, you know my story, and uh, you know, I'm not going to go into the whole ins and outs of it here. But but to be to have achieved that and to live in that possibility that it will happen. And it can happen. It just happened in a very different way than anyone would have ever imagined. Um, for me, that was that was quite a powerful, that was quite quite a powerful manifestation of you know everything in front of you was saying it would ne- never happen, and yet magically, you know, I have a beautiful nine-year-old daughter now. <laughs> you certainly do, and and thank you, Vinay, because I think it's this. You know, you spoke about inside and outside. I think it's this sense, one of the encouragement I want to give to those listening is actually sometimes I see people going, this is my faith or my spirituality and it's outside of work and then they go to work and do something different. And the reason I'm just teasing out the questions here is just to demonstrate that actually you can express your your spirituality or faith in work in a way that's authentic and actually has a real impact impact on others. And yeah. and whilst we're talking about impact, the, the sort of second part of this third question is, just as a quick glimpse, you know, what resources have you found helpful on your conscious leadership journey and, uh, um, you know, what's been helpful to you? Um, so, so a few things. So at school, I was never a, an avid reader. I mm. didn't, I didn't, I didn't read a lot, which kind of has its own story. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in later years, um, I did read a lot more. And I've, I've got, a, I've just got a, a few little books that I picked up on my shelf, books that were important to me for very different reasons. So, um, this is the uh, art of possibility. All oh, right, okay, yeah. Um, and this was a game changer um, mm-hmm. for me. It really brought about the early understanding of conscious leadership, possibility. It brought about for me, um, you know, just a, a range of, of, of thinking and challenges to constructs that I had. So this this is a really really important book. Um, thinking about the whole. Um, and um and not parts um this was a incredible book that i read you can see how thick it is. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. you can see all the notes and stuff i've made you can tell when i've read a good book because i write all <laughs> over it and there's you know um this was um another game changer this was about systems thinking it was about understanding that the um that everything is connected um yeah. and that you know it, it everything is a system so you can't tinker with something here and not have an effect down here um, and it really, it, th- this really kind of forms a basis, um, I think, for my change work, the transformation work, the style of leadership I have about looking at the, the, the landscape of whatever we're doing over here will have a ripple effect, an effect to the thing. It's, a, it's an ecology, you know, you cannot change one thing and not have an impact on something else. So that was a really, really important say, book And that's me. one book I've used. Isn't that a great book? I think he calls it like a feel book because for me, it's so practical, yeah. isn't it? It's and amazing. It's, it really not just gives you, I don't know how to describe it, you know, it gives you insights and I think it's an inspirational book in that respect. Yeah, yeah. Um, then the next one was, um, this was from uh, my egg day. So this yeah, is uh, Built to Last. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. This is all about visionary organisations yes. and great examples in there about values, um, being a clock builder, not a time teller, 
um, big, hairy, audacious goals, all of that kind of stuff. So there's some really great constructs in here. I um, really love this book. It also then paved the way to me um, discovering Tom Peters as well, oh, um, who okay. I'm a big, big fan of. Yeah. And then this bizarre tweet triangle I had between me, Chris Akabusi, and <laughs> uh, Tom Peters talking about the hedgehog principle. It's just, oh. yeah, it's bizarre. Um, and, and just a, a couple of other quick ones. Um, uh, the well-known one, everyone, and I've already talked about it. So Stephen mm, Covey, again, yes. you can see that it's been yeah. well worked through. Um, this formed the foundation um, mm. in many ways for me. Um, the, the, I wouldn't say that I deliberately live every single one of those habits daily, uh, but they are very, they're very key in my, in my mindset. And sharpening the saw, we think win-win, um, synergizing, thinking about um, putting first things first, all of that stuff and how I, how I kind of live live my life, lead my teams and work with people is kind of, is found that the foundation of it is, is, is from. from I just want, just want to add there, Vinay, I think, cause it, and I think it's uh, an important quality for, um, mm -hmm. for a conscious leader within that book. I know there's also one which touched me, which is seek first to understand and then be understood. Yes. Yes. And absolutely. That, was just beautiful. that had a deep impact on me. Yeah, it did. And it moved, it moved really from a, my mum used to have a saying that, you know, you're born with two of these and you've got one of those. <laughs> I don't, I know I don't always, I don't, I don't always do it in that ratio, but I try my best. <laughs> and I think it was that, it was that really early discovery of, um, you know, the, the listening intent. Am I listening for the opportunity to reply? Am I listening for the opportunity to understand? Yeah. And most of us listen from a place of the opportunity to reply, because as the other person speaking, all that's going on in our head is when am I going to get, when is the break coming? When is the pause coming long enough that I can in interject and, drive my answer or my opinion in versus actually I'm really sitting here in a space of possibility that, that what I'm thinking right now could be changed by what I'm about to listen to by the person in front of me. Um, and I think that was a, that was a big shift. And that probably happened quite big in my thirties. I think my, my early thirties is when a lot of this stuff really kind of had strong foundation in what I did. Um, and then, um, the other book, and this might not be as well known, but it is a, a remarkable book. Is um, uh, oh, I love that. Book. I love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So they are they are important <laughs> books to me. They um, they've all they've they've all played a a, a key role. And then I guess um, mentors, coaches, mm -hmm. people like yourself that I've discovered through my network that we will pick up the phone and talk to one another. Um, surrounding yourself by not just like minded people. For, for agreeability's sake so i.e you don't just surround yourself with like-minded people that will agree with everything you say but like-minded people that operate from that same sense that will hold you accountable and challenge you um in the right spirit and hold you to hold you to account for your principles and i remember once <laughs> it really it really made me laugh that i posted something on facebook once um that was quite a judgmental statement about something and my and my friend circle and i'm like just immediately held me to account for what I believe. This is not you. You don't, you, you've always said, you know, reserved, you know, that you, you shouldn't be too judgmental. And actually this is just a, you've just basically um, gone against the principles that you talk about. And I went, actually, do you know what? That's great. It's great that people can catch you in your, in those moments and go, this isn't you, mate. This isn't, this isn't how you, this isn't how you, how you portray yourself. This isn't how you live. This isn't what you speak about. And you're outside of your congruity here. So I'm going to, just give you a gentle nudge that you go back into this is your congruence thank you i mean that, i just think that's a really key insight that uh, if for a conscious leader that you're accountable i love that story i think to others to your team as well and i know how you love um ensuring you know the values are congruent and i, and I think that actually holding and, and actually living those values is, is important and the other thing the final question i want to ask on, on this part was from my own perspective, and one of the faiths that I enjoy is, well, Christianity, but Celtic Christianity. And you, mm. you, you picked another important insight. That was having a mentor or mentors. And I quite often think that actually I have a mentor. I, you know, my mentors, actually, the really good ones, have held me in what I've called fierce love. So actually fierce in the sense they're challenging me, but love in the sense I always know they've got my back and they're always wanting to, to empower me to, to, to be you know, a better version of who, who I am now. And so what I wanted to ask you was, you know, from your own faith perspective, Hindu faith perspective, I know in the Celtic Christian perspective, this aspect of mentor, or they call it soul friend. And mm. I think it's actually St. Bridget who said, a person without a soul friend is like a body without a head. 
Mm-hmm. I wondered in your in your, in your um, faith is is there a tradition in, in the Hindu tradition of having someone who's a mentor or a soul friend or someone to guide you in in your life's journey? I I don't think so. On a personal level, I I haven't within my faith had a uh, had somebody like that. But I think you know the Hindu faith. Um, there are gurus that exist mm-hmm. all over India, um, and there are people that will have you know a guru in its, in its true sense is a is a teacher is, is a is somebody not teacher in an educational sense, but somebody who guides you through their life experience and will help to give you direction. So there have been elders in my family that have been my my gurus, I guess, you know, uncles and aunts and mm-hmm. um, uh, and many of them wise beyond their years that have made sure that I've corrected my path very quickly when I've <laughs> gone off into a, <laughs> the wrong direction. Um, and, and and then, yes, you know, in my faith, there are, there are, there are one or two, um, but I think, Outside of that, I just have I've been lucky enough, lucky, I guess lucky enough or open enough that I've invited people in at the right time. Um, you know, the Joseph Campbell work of um, the hero's journey is, is another kind of key thread. Um, and, you know, when, you know, in every hero's journey, um, a, a, a master shows up or a, a you know, a, a teacher shows up, you know, in the classic adaptation of Star Wars is Yoda. Um, and we all have our moments of finding our Yoda or our, uh, at, at the right time in our career that just happen to appear at the right time. Sometimes it's for a split second, then it's a phrase or it's a turn of words. And, and at other times it's somebody that stays with you throughout a long period of your life. Um, and so I think, I think being open and, and recognizing that when they arrive, um, that you, that you do recognize that they're there and, and you're, you're prepared to listen. Thank you. Thank you. And, and before we move on to the next question, I'll just, what I will say is that the books that you show and I'll put them in the link below so people can follow them. And I think what you're just talking about there is a great example of, you know, some people do say when you're ready, the mentor or the guide will appear. Mm-hmm. And that book synchronicity really kind of demonstrates that for me. It's a great yeah. read for those that haven't read it. I think it, you know, it's, it, it's one of, you know, well, I think all the books are worth reading, but I just, just remembered that one. Yes. So um, I think we were talking about this earlier. Research, and it's actually uh, Professor Jody Fry, suggests that inner life is the source of what he calls spiritual leadership, where I'm just going to refer to in this show as conscious leadership, where he says inner life is a form of spiritual contemplative practice. It could be just a stillness practice. So it might include walking nature, meditation, etc. So what, and there could be an awareness practices or it could be spiritual practice. What practices have you found helpful, Vinay, and why? Um, for me, exercise has been quite, um, has, has been a big part. So for the last five or six years, uh, so six years ago, I joined the 5am club, as they put it. So up every day at probably 4, 4.30. And I would normally train in the morning um, at 5am. And that hour of solitude, where it's headphones on, world off, I'm in with me and myself. I don't have to be anybody else except who I am. And... Um, I enjoy weight training, um, lifting heavy things. You know, it's just, it, it, it's a way of therapy for me. So that's been a really important, that's been an important part of my life. Um, I journaled for a little while. I wouldn't yeah. say that I had the discipline to do it all the time, but I, I did do. I had a, um, a, friend, a friend of mine, Miles Grant, who's also a coach as well. Um, he and I used to have a set of gratitude questions that we'd go through every morning mm-hmm. and we'd email them to each other every time we completed it. And that was a, that was a really nice process that we did for about 18 months um of just you know 10 things that you're grateful for of that one list what's the thing that you want to talk about today and just some, just some really nice things and I'm, I'm happy to share the template if it's if it's helpful to people um, please do yeah doing that. yeah um and then i think just um uh, just uh, as part of my faith um you know the beautiful thing about the hindu faith is i don't need to go to a temple um the temple is within my home there's a small temple just in my room in fact if i swivel this around you might just see yes can see it yes yeah, wonderful um, yes <laughs> and every morning it's um very short prayer just an invocation to uh bring bring the connection between myself and 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 the universe together um and and they're, they're just some of the simple things that i do I, you know there isn't there isn't a there isn't a magic formula that I follow. I don't think, you know, um, but they're, they're just things that I think make a difference to me. And I know they make a difference because when I don't do them, I can absolutely feel the difference mm. in how I'm operating. Mm. Well, thank you for that wide ranging answer, because sometimes I think, you know, leaders, conscious leaders can feel actually I need to do this as in, 
a certain practice in order to be conscious. And I think what you've just demonstrated is actually there's a wide variety of things that you can do. And I, and I personally believe it's more about something that resonates with you that I love the aspect yeah. you said that the world switches off, you've got time for yourself. And I'm guessing yeah. that, that some of your best ideas have come through that period of time where things have come yes. to you because you have switched off from the outside world. And Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm very much an early morning person. So my best work is pre-midday. Mm -hmm. um so you know if i need i know that if i need to hit mm -hmm. something if i need to get out a report or write a strategy paper or or do something quite critical early morning is the time when i'm at my absolute best that's when mm. i'm you know i'm switched on i'm connected i'm in my i'm in my flow and then post midday um i'm in a different state of energy and actually interesting enough, that's becoming more a time for me to absorb information read and reflect as opposed mm. to output it's been more of a time for input than for output i understand now i understand and actually Vinay, there's been i'm sure those that, that are watching and listening for me anyway there's been so many nuggets that you've shared already i'm sure people are going to go away with, with something to reflect upon and hopefully to act upon as well so so my my final question finally is 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 one which is given unlimited time and resources what single thing would you recommend aspiring conscious leaders to do? The, thing, the single thing I think um, is um, stop aspiring to somebody else's plan mm -hmm. or somebody else's practice or somebody else's way of doing things. I think as we've just talked about, there are a number of, there are a number of different resources available. You've got to find out what works for you. Um, so I think that's first and foremost, the, the practices that work for you, that resonate for you, whether that's exercise, whether that's walking, whether that's, whether that's meditation, whether it's simply just sitting quietly and reading with a cup of coffee, whatever the thing might be for you, what, where you feel it brings about that, that connection between the inner self and the outer self, I think that's the thing that I'd really encourage people to do. And I think doing the, the work to really go deep and understand who you are at your core. You know, who are you? What are your core values? What do you really stand for? And understanding that whether you want them to show up or not in the workplace, at times of stress, they show up. They show you, you, you will default to who you really are. Mm -hmm. um, so you can either do that deliberately or you can wait till the moment mm -hmm. and suddenly show to the world who you really are. So I think, I think understanding that is, is really important. Thank you. And I think we were talking earlier before we came on the show that, that actually I think this work, this journey, there's fantastic you know benefits from it but at times it's very difficult and i think we were talking about actually if you don't experience those difficult times then probably you're not doing a full journey as such and i know i don't know if the hindu faith and the christian faith and other faiths they talk about you know dark night of the soul and i know you've had your dark night of the soul moments so so i sense that's also something that that's going to be present for for a conscious leader yeah i think i think the journey the journey is the thing um yeah that the you know it it is there are things that you can learn there are teachings and all those kind of things but actually at the end of it life is the experience mm -hmm. it is going through those moments it is stepping into possibility um, at the hardest times that you can possibly imagine it is being willing to stand up for who you are no matter how difficult the circumstances it's willing to it's being willing to catch yourself and and when you're outside of congruency and going actually hmm, that really wasn't me. I need to apologize and, and be big, big mm. enough and humble enough to do that. And I think the, the other difficult thing about when you're, in, when you're on this is that you step into a world where you hold yourself to a standard. And those excuses you usually be able to give yourself about, oh, I can just blame it on somebody else or I can, you know, it's somebody else's fault. You can't do that anymore because you've suddenly, you've changed the dial. You've given yourself a standard by which to hold yourself. Yeah. And that's sometimes the most difficult thing because we can sit here and you can hear other people complain about, I can't do this. I can't do that. Um, and sometimes I wish that I could forget some of the things that I know and just be a complainer for a day. Um, but you can't because you, you have, you have, you've evolved that you've become a, you become a better, stronger version of yourself. And I think um, that phrase of the, the best version of yourself and trying to show up the best version of yourself at that point in time is really important. There's a, there's another guy that I follow a guy called Elliot Hulse, who's in the States. Um, he's a strength and conditioning coach. And way more than that, but he, you know, his whole thing is about becoming the strongest version of yourself, both physically, mentally, and spiritually. Um, and and some of the work that he did kind of has flowed and, and bled into uh, into the into the work that I'm doing now as well. So I think, I think, yeah, um, you know, 
don't follow don't follow there is no magic blueprint and a guide that somebody else can give you you've got to find what works for you um go in deep and and figure out who you are and, and what that is no matter how comfortable and uncomfortable that might be um and, and then just you've got to get into that discipline of every day show up and do the best you can and be the best version of yourself mm, thank you Vinny. I, I really love that and thank you i appreciate that and I do have, uh, I have what I call my Columbo question. If you remember, I love Columbo. And he always, at the end, he always sort of says, and just one more thing. Yeah. So <laughs> my kind of, in this case, one, one final nugget. I will say, because I think it's important, you've been speaking very passionately about, you know, this being a journey. So I will actually say to anyone, I'll put a link below that, Vin, you know, Vinay's book, A Passage to India. If you'll move, then please do, you know, get a copy of that book. It's a beautiful read. But what I want to ask you is my Columbo question. Are there any of your own resources or offering or something you think would be helpful that you'd like to offer at this point? Um, I guess I, I'm always uh, open to connecting to people and having great conversations. So um, if there are other people who have resonated with what I've said, um, please connect to me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm always, I'm always in, interested in interesting people and, and having debate and conversations about, about think topics like leadership. Um, but other than that, no, this, uh, I don't have any courses or other things to, to, to promote. I think that I left that world about six years ago. <laughs> well, Vinay, just thank you so much for being on the show, which you have every blessing in your conscious leadership journey. Thank you, David. And I really thank you for showing up in, in the world of conscious leadership in the way that you do. Thank you. Now, if you're listening, if you've enjoyed this podcast and, and my approach to conscious leadership, then please know that I help aspiring conscious leaders develop purpose-led, high-performing leadership themes through one-to-one -one coaching and tailored leadership programs. So if you sense I may be able to help you, then please look me up, David Wetton on LinkedIn, and let's jump on, on a conversation together. Finally, what I wanted to say, I want to thank all you as listeners and watchers of this podcast if you're willing, please do share a link to this podcast with those you think would truly benefit from it. Because I, I truly believe that now is the time for conscious leadership. And with all the inspiring, heartfelt work you as listeners are doing, I have absolutely no doubt that conscious leadership will become a thriving reality, making a difference for the greater good of all. So until next time, I'll leave you with a blessing from John O'Donoghue. May the light of your soul bless the work you do with the secret love and warmth of your heart. And so it is. <laughs>